section is how to play the opening. The opening in chess is a fight for getting your pieces out and controlling the center. There's three good principles you want to follow in the beginning of the game when you're playing the opening to make sure that your game goes well. The first is control the center. The center is these four squares right here. E4, D4, E5, and D5. And if you control the center of the board, you can uh, more easily control what's going on in the game and you have more space for your army to move and attack. And so w when you see all good games of chess, the beginning moves have some type of aim of controlling the center. Often you'll see uh, beginners start pushing some of these pawns on, on the edge of the board and, and that's not usually like like push up on here. It's not usually a good a good move because you want to you want to be controlling the center. So that's the first principle is control the center. The second principle is you want to develop your pieces as quickly as possible, generally towards the center of the board. And so that's you know the knights and the bishops usually go first and then eventually you get your rooks into the game uh, when they have some open lines. And so the third principle that you want to follow is get your king castled by move 12. And this is important because a lot of games of chess are won because the, uh, the person who loses does not castle their king and, it, and it's in the center of the board where it's more easily attacked. So this position right here is actually impossible but it's a this is just a, an exercise to show the importance of controlling the center. This is a classic exercise of Niles North High School's chess coach Mr. K and uh, he was described by the General Assembly of Illinois as being one of the premier high school coaches in the country. So this is a really good exercise for learning why the center is important. So first, um, you're playing white and you have to figure out how many moves does it take to put the black king in check. And now you have to think, um, just assume you have a bunch of moves and black doesn't have any moves right now it's just for for the purpose of figuring out how to put the king in check and so you can you should pause it if you uh if you can't get it after a few minutes then just keep going most puzzles all the puzzles you'll see here if you can't get it after a few minutes then just keep going so the answer to this one is two moves knight to e5 to c4 where it puts the king in check. Um, th there's uh, some of these. There's more than one solution, but but that's the fastest way right now. And so now, okay. So now I'm going to change the position. I'm just going to make a move so I can make a move. Okay. So in this position, let's say it's White's turn. Um, now, the question again is, how many moves does it take for white to put the black king in check? But the exception here is, is now, the knight cannot move to a square where it can be captured by an enemy piece. So, this square right here is out of the question, because if the knight came here, it would be captured. So, try to figure out how to put the king in check. So and there's there's plenty of solutions so so don't worry um, if you get one that's different than mine. So okay, the answer is 
four. One, two, three, four. Okay, that might be a bit confusing, so I'm gonna just uh, go through it, but I'll, I'll just give some random bl uh, black moves, so. Okay, ign ignore this bishop being here. The point was just to see how the d-pawn affected the position. Okay, it took four moves to put the king in check um, just because there was a pawn here that controlled the center. So that's just an example of why you want to control the center. When you, when you play a game of chess, um, this is uh, important. Okay, so now I'm going to talk about the second principle about developing your pieces. And so I'm just going to give an example of uh, white giving uh, development and uh, where it's, it's good and black moving uh, their pieces out in a way that's not good. So e4, if you notice, this controls the d5 square. And... Uh, So the moves I'm going to make for black are, are not going to be that good. They're not horrible right now, but they're going to get worse. And you, you'll see a lot of people play like this when they first learn how to play chess. You see, okay, well, let me go a little farther. Okay, in a position like this, white is crushing because uh, this this is ide one of the ideal forms of development for white the white pieces. If you notice, the bishops control the center, the pawns control the center, the knights control the center, and the rooks indirectly control the center. So this position. Um, is, is what you want to set up something like this. Um, and the rooks generally go somewhere where they think there's going to be a pawn exchange. So let's say this, let's say this, is, this was played. Pawn takes pawn. Pawn takes pawn. And you notice this, this rook is already starting to attack the king. I mean, this is just a hypothetical situation. But... Uh, this is an example of how you want to get your pieces out. So, and lastly, uh, you want to castle. So, I'll give a, a quick example of the fool's checkmate because it'll show why the king, when the king is not castled, is a little bit weaker. Game is just for instructive purposes. Okay, so a position like this, one one problem with the king in the beginning of the game is that this pawn right here on f7 is sometimes weak and can be attacked because the only piece that defends it right now is the king. And so if black does not make the, the right move, then uh, let's say they play this, then queen takes f7 as checkmate. So one, one benefit of castling is it makes the king a little safer. Now you notice there's two pieces defending this pawn. So, and just to go through back why this is checkmate. Um, the, the queen cannot be captured because it's defended by the bishop. And also, um, so in summary, you want to control the center, develop your pieces quickly, and get your king castled to be safe.